Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the C-Man, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the C-Man's Cinema. Sit down. I'm not wasting any time. You see the robe. You know what's going on. Why don't you pull up a chair? Take a seat. We are getting ready to finally watch the finale, which is not an hour long. It is not 90 minutes long, what we were all hoping for based on some of the rumors and things that people were seeing, but it is 51 minutes long, which puts it near the first episode, which for me is still the best written. So I have hope that this is going to do what we want it to at least it's not like 38 minutes and i got like this much shit to do um but yeah I, i'm definitely really psyched i can't wait to dive into it before we can get there though my good friend Britt is back she's feeling better she just gave us all her spoiler thoughts uh from last week after after missing out uh you know watching the episode with us but she's here for the finale Britt, welcome back how are you i'm great thanks for having me of course how excited are you right now I'm cannot wait to push play. I need to see what happens. <laughs> Same. Before we hit play, any theories, any thoughts about the finale you want floated into the world before we find out exactly what's going on or things that you want to see, things you got hopes for? No, no theories. I think we just know that Obi-Wan has to end up back on Tatooine. Um, that's a given. I don't know how they're going to bring, they're clearly going to bring Luke in, in in some way. Yeah. Um, and I just, I don't think Reva survived. I don't see a, a world in which Reva can survive this episode. She got one, one like near death experience. Um, but I don't think her character is going to continue I, or should continue. I agree with you. I still, we talked about this in the spoiler chat, but like, I just, I don't understand why you left her alive at the end of the episode. She served her purpose, did everything we needed from her. We got her story wrapped up, could have just cut it and gone, but. I don't know. I agree. I don't think that she's surviving this episode. I hope that happens early because it feels like she's going to be the one that, pardon my French, fucks things up in this episode. Like if people are upset, it's probably going to stem from her. Um, yeah, I don't really have any theories. I honestly, I'm not really sure where we're going to go. Yeah. Like while for sure she's a wild card, I, I don't even know. Like even just with like Obi-Wan and, and Vader, like with him, with them being chased, who knows what happens? Two things that I hope for. Obviously, I hope we get another showdown. I want to see Anakin come in and physically like abuse Obi, similar to what he did in episode three, but Obi know how to counter it, outsmart him, outthink him, and obviously still be the master when he walks away from this episode. I would also absolutely love if Hayden takes the helmet off to verbally talk directly to Obi. I think Ooh. a lot of I think there's been a lot of concept art of what you know Anakin looks like in the makeup and we've seen bits and pieces of it but we haven't seen it in full context so i think it would be kind of like a cool little fan for some reason for him to actually speak to him I, it would be I, for me it'd be cool that's just a little like mm -hmm. Corey wishes things in the world could be what i hope for so that's all i've got are you ready yes ready all right. let's do it three two one play oh man we got it Warning. Said, I love that, like, I mean, he hit an actual kid last week. Um, like you saw him make contact with one of those young wings. But I love that we didn't get that in front of episode three when he was just dragging people out of out of huts and stuff. Which did you see Joby Harold's interview, ironically, the week before the Grand Inquisitor comes back? Um no, I just I know you said like he was like, Don't worry, we're gonna yeah. take care um, of but he talked about how that village sequence originally uh -huh. was like the hallway sequence in Rogue One. He killed like 12, 15 people. And Disney yeah. was like, nah, that's too hardcore. <laughs> so, but it's like, like what people want. And, and like, that's why I have real issues with like them ever wanting to do a Vader series because I don't think Disney would let it be what it has to be. Yep, absolutely. Um, that being said, Deborah Chow and Co. still found a way to make him as terrifying yeah. as humanly possibly make him. <laughs> oh, yeah. so See, he just like he just like watches them. I, I'm telling you, the, the person who commented that he should have grabbed the second one and then she should have attacked. It would have just played so much better. Yeah. Also, I said this last week. Doesn't it feel like friend or friend? I don't know how you say his last name feels more like the Rebels version of the Grand Inquisitor now, even more now. so in the beginning. Like, it's like, it's the thing that's fired him up again. Yeah. It's kind of cool. All right, here we go. Also, another reason to give Tala some more love at some point, 
you put you put the droid like yeah ned ned b is in the i need some more ned b in my life i know they have lola in there like well i think lola is just a nice nod because we've had leia like really involved this season but like you could bring ned b back ned b yeah we know how much disney loves a good droid that they can like hold on to and exploit oh absolutely even one that doesn't talk this guy yeah right that's exactly what i was about to say i have something to say wait your turn you can have what's left when i how did she get there i don't know she's still in pain though yeah i'm glad her story is up front though maybe, maybe we'll we'll get an end to it quick oh wow they are right on their tails oh boy oh man Firepower. Him walking onto the deck of that ship just feels so Star Wars. Yeah. We're not going to make it to Tessin, are we? How much time do you need? More than we have. Is he going to give himself up? We need a new belt for this, Peter. Certain somebody broke the last one. <laughs> Your uncle's a patient man. I am not that patient. <laughs> Owen? There's something you need to know. No, no way! You can't just leave me here! I'm the one that Vader wanted. Mm. Knew it. Roken needs more time to fix the ship. This will give him that time. You've spent ten years protecting the Jedi. This is my chance to return that favor. You must promise me that you'll get her home, Hodja. You have my word. Although I know the word of a liar and a fake Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> I like what they do with this character. Yeah, I do too. I think there are probably a lot of Star Wars fans that maybe didn't like him initially, but his arc has really made him a solid character. How did she know I was here? I don't know. All I know is she's coming. I'm not putting anyone else in danger, Owen. We're enough. You and me. Ooh. All right. Finally, give, give her something to do. Right? You always forget about. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's hopefully a fun team up coming. Mm -hmm. I'd be okay with Beiru taking down Reva. Yeah, like you always talk about Owen, right? Having to protect yeah. Luke, but that'd be a cool little twist. You said you'd take me home. Please tell your father I tried. I have something for you. Broken found it before we got out. She would have wanted you to have it. It's empty. Well, I wasn't going to give you a blast. <laughs> You're 10 years old, but you won't always be. So good. How do you stay mad at that guy? <laughs> Even no, you can't. Your little girl. I love that he's like letting himself feel get attached and yeah. feel. Yeah. I have to face him, Master. Oh, please give me that Liam Neeson when appearance. He dies, or I do. I need the voice today. Are you ready? <sighs> I like jumped. I was like, <gasps> All right, yeah. I was like, nah, he's too phys he's too real. <laughs> <laughs> You, you forget, like, in all of this, everybody wanted Liam Neeson. <laughs> I completely forgot about him until that moment where I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we got O'Shea Jackson Jr. instead. There are not many leaders left. People follow you. Don't stop. Just get started. I hope so. I would take Roken also coming back somewhere. Yeah. I mean, you can be in, in the show, right, that we were talking about, like, a tall oh, to come back. Absolutely. And that's a phenomenal acting one, too, right, to lead a show like mm -hmm. that. We're tracking him in the escape crop. There's one life form aboard. That's him. We cannot prioritize one Inquisitor's lone balls. Jedi. It sure does. Not just any Jedi. Follow Kenobi. I like that acting from Freen in the background. Like, even though he's out of mm -hmm. focus, like, I want to say something, but I'm not that dumb. <laughs> yeah. I gave my, I tried. Come on. Their place is humongous. <laughs> the Tuscans are on the hunt again. They're raiding farms along the waste. So stay in here. If anything goes wrong, you, you know what to do. You run. Prepare my ship. One on one, it's what we want. Also, I love that back in the day, it was feasible for the Organas to adopt Leia and have them take on her name or their name. But like, 
couldn't be Luke Lars. <laughs> couldn't be their son. Had to be their nephew for a brother that is not there. Yeah. I, I mean, I suppose when you are actually his uncle and aunt and like his only family that he knows that, you know. Yeah. Like, same time. Like I was just thinking, I was just thinking that. Like yeah. you see the and you see her yeah. hug him and like she couldn't, she couldn't be her son. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Oh, she left him Lola. I'm telling you, Disney need that. They need the Lola merch. Yeah. Oh, the Lola merch is definitely coming. Back in the old school robes for this one. Who do you think the black robe was that he, he took for like the last episode and a half? Do you think it was somebody he knew or just? I think it might have just been something. They have all the the, the things right that that Jedi's have left behind. Yeah. It's literally all I care about in the world. Just these two guys. This is. Oh, oh. That's like a it's like a comic book cover. It is. It's and it's it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Or a book cover. You can do it either way. Oh. I, again, I love how it, distinct each place is they've been. Have you come to destroy me, Obi-Wan? I will do what I must. <laughs> yes! Let's go! Oh. And you will die. Chill. I can... Chill. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so pretty. That's it. That's gorgeous. I hate when they do that. I need to cut away. That's so Star Wars too, right? Like they never say, but like we really didn't have to. That immediately is the most gorgeous scene in this entire oh, show. God, like, oh, I'm I, like, I, I got I'm, like shaking. <laughs> I do like that they're keeping like this horror like trope with her though. Like Ooh. That was a nice cut. Mm. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> All puns are welcome. Oh my god. The new lightsabers definitely pop more than the old ones. Yeah, yeah, which is, I mean, what they wanted, right? They want to be able to to bathe him in blue light and Vader and red. Oh, so Got a little aggression coming out of Obi here. Uh oh. Your strength has returned, but the weakness still remains. Oh! Oh! And that is why you will always lose. Oh God, Obi! You give Vader the high ground. Nice. Yeah, I like that. Only Jedi we've seen win from the low ground is Obi. Oh my god! Did you truly think that you could defeat me? You have failed, Master. If there's one flaw I have with Vader, he doesn't make sure his like kills are dead. Dead. If you don't see the body, you don't leave. <laughs> I infinitely like Owen more than I did at the beginning of this show. Justice. 
Absolutely. Ooh, get her. Ooh. But why? Run. Why is she after? Like, what? Again, what is why? Why? That's all I want to know. No idea. You want to scare a 10-year-old little boy? Like, why? Like, you honestly, even if, like, even if she is opting to stay, like, heel, you really think Vader's going to take you back? Like, there's nothing that she could do that would make him take her back. That boy, Obi. Jesus. Come on, come on. Let's go, Nice. Let's go, Let's go, Yes. At inverse two. Ooh. Their skill work is so good. So good. They love it so much. So much. Like, look at that shit. Oh my god. Oh, oh me. Let's go. Oh shit. I have like chill. That's what Ooh. we call being a master, bruh. If that was a stormtrooper, first impact, they would have been dead. <laughs> Jeez, man, I—they are really leaning in to how so good. This, this fight is. Like, I give me twenty-five minutes bad. of that. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't have this shit going on. But they show how much of a badass Baru is, and that's fantastic. That's true. If you give something here to like boost young Luke a little bit. Yeah. I could, I I could forgive. I could forgive. Oh shit. Let's go, Obi. I just, just Obi's face, man. Oh, oh, we're gonna get the face. Oh my god. Oh, oh. oh my god. God mode. They're gonna, oh my God. Anakin. Anakin's gone. <sighs> I am what remains. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Anakin. For all of it. I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. The same way, I will destroy you. Then my friend is truly dead. 
Goodbye. Darth. cry a what? lot with these shows but i teared up <laughs> it's like it got me break on you and mcgregor's face like if that you just cut you and like and but, okay. for him to feel it like this is what i created and then anakin to be like no i created this fucking palpatine just, and also, the the light, the blue on his face when like you you think that like Obi Wan's getting through to him, and then all of a sudden he's like, okay. "Nah, it was me," and it's red. And I'm like, "Yeah, holy." People can say whatever they want about Deborah Chow. You cannot deny that she has handled Obi Wan and, and Joby Harold have o- handled Obi Wan and Darth phenomenally. Yeah. They get it. They get it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I still don't get this. <laughs> Luke, do something badass. Is he going to play dead like she played dead? Is she just going to turn around and leave? <laughs> she can't do it. Oh. How far away were they? Was he? <laughs> I mean, he he was able to jump to, you know, like he had a hyperdrive on there, so he was able to jump, but couldn't have been too far, right? I mean, gotta, yeah, even uh, even with that, it's that extra twenty minutes we needed, it's just the car ride. <laughs> like, I just don't get this chick's motivations. Like, if this is all we were going to do, why did we do it? And she was just to show the parallels, I guess. But, like, you didn't need it to get him back on Tatooine, probably, to get Obi-Wan back. But he would have gone there anyways. Yeah. And to play like he's dead this long, is just it seems kind of pointless because we all know he's not. Yeah. I thought he was going to, like, pull a Harry Potter and, like, wake up and be like, no, we're not done. <laughs> or just, like, wake up and out of sheer fear, like, somehow move a rock or something that falls on yeah. it. So we we left Reva alive on one planet so we could just leave her in the same position on a different planet. I think Obi-Wan's going to finish her. It's not in his nature. No. <laughs> I couldn't do it. You haven't failed them. By showing mercy, (laughs) you have given them peace. Always finding the good. Now you're free. We both are. I wouldn't say she honored them. Yeah. That's a stretch. The probes are tracking every system within range until he is bound. You seem agitated, my friend. He will not obey me again. I wonder if your thoughts are clear on this, Lord Vader. Kenobi means nothing. I serve only you, my master. Yo, if that's not a tee up for a Darth Vader show, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's so fucking beautiful. It's. I... <laughs> I almost checked my phone. I was like, is that it? Is that how we're ending Obi Wan? <laughs> can't, can't be. You can't be ending there. <laughs> 
the fact Not that we just got Ian McDermott. Like, Darth Vader will return. The fact that we just got Ian McDermott, like we better get fucking Liam Neeson. Like that's how this show better end. Ooh, I like this. Going back to how we first saw her, but it's actually her. Yeah. Doing it herself. Yes. The braids. Oh, Let's go, young lady. We don't want to keep your. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a whole? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so who is it today? More cousins? Not exactly. Oh, she's gonna freak out. Who am I to separate a young lady from her droid? Well, if you ever need my help again, you know where to find me. Let's hope that day never comes. I mean, it could come one more time. Yeah, right. I would take one more. Some, some more adventure. So what do you do now? Gotta go be a hermit. I don't know. What do you think I should do? I think you should see. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Will I ever see you again? Maybe. But we must be careful. No one must know, or it could endanger us both. Yeah, wow. Okay. Let's see what they did. Goodbye. Oh, that's cute. Lola's in the holster. Mm hmm. Figured they'd become a Lola holder. Yeah. <laughs> Digging the new robes. He's looking fresh. Looking good. Yeah. Packing up the cave. Move on to his hermit. Shack, for lack of a better word. They have a pop of Obi riding that thing. Oh, really? Yeah. It's phenomenal. The only protection he needs now, Owen, is you and Brew. Dan, you want to meet him? <laughs> Hello there. Mm, there it is. Yes. Let's go. And it's probably the most like Alec Guinness he's sounded. Yeah. I only. Uh, Perfect place for it. Really was. Master Qui-Gon. Oh, took you long enough. <laughs> Beginning to think you'd never come. I was always here, Obi-Wan. You just were not ready to see. Come on, you've got a ways to go. Oh. Holy shit. Holy shit. Could that be our Obi-Wan sequel? That's our, that's our sequel, Qui-Gon. right? He's training. He's training. If you can get Liam Neeson back with enough money to do a Disney Plus show. I, and six episodes? Like, oh man, that was... Oh, well done. Holy and Joe it, Harold. Holy shit. Uh, that was it. That minus the Reva stuff made it, I couldn't have wanted a better episode. Especially <laughs> I cried. 
I remember when we were like, oh man, it feels like the the Vader shot. Like, is that where they're gonna end it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh no. I cried. We got Ian, we got Ian McDermott. Yeah. We got Liam fucking Neeson. I, like this show delivered on everything. Everything. Obi Wan Darth Vader. Yeah. Like, is it cool getting to see like a live action version of the Grand Inquisitor? Sure. Did I need that in the series? No no more than what we got in like the first episode right like you yeah. want to use the first episode they're hunting down jedi that's fine didn't really need them a hundred percent did not need reva nothing taking nothing away from moses ingram i mean she acted her ass off this episode too but yeah. it is just a storyline that ultimately got in the way and i think if you would have just cut it off last week i think people probably would be okay with it i think the fact that you drag it drug it dragged it into the best episode for Obi-Wan and Vader and like delivering on all that stuff. I just like yeah. it, 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 it's, it's not going to sit well with people, but I don't want to harp on the bad. Uh, it's out there. I'm done with it. I like, I didn't like where Reva's character went. Yeah. Was Moses Ingram, but fucking Obi-Wan and Darth Vader, man, did Joby Harold and Deborah Chow understand those two characters how to utilize those characters and like, holy shit, give Deborah Chow all things that are lightsaber action oriented. That is yeah. the best choreo, not even just choreography. Cause like we know, I, I'd say some of the stuff on Mustafar probably is more impressive because of the speed, but from a, how you shoot a lightsaber sequence between Anakin and Obi-Wan, yeah. like, every time mm-hmm. those two are on opposite sides of each other, she is just doing fucking magical things yeah visually some like gorgeous the best shots we got the entire series and like we we talked about during the reaction like depending on what they were saying are we lighting them in red are we lighting them in blue like all of the stuff of just like using the force with the rocks and like the fake out of like oh is Qui-Gon Jin gonna show up when he's like dying yeah um but like and using the force as well as the lightsabers to show how obi-wan is still a stronger i mean vader strong but like obi-wan obviously can still defeat him and like all of this like the pent-up frustration that anakin has is ultimately his downfall and i think it's great what they did using palpatine to be like if you're still focused on him like you're not you you're you're worth nothing to me and he's like okay well then i just serve you which is a great like you said a great end to the vader show but also it gives us an out okay he's no longer searching for kenobi so he's no longer on his radar so kenobi can go and be a little more than like a hermit so that like gives us that freedom yeah it, which like, i think totally, is smart yeah it's totally one of those things where like if you don't include the emperor conversation right? Like where that leaves off with Vader on that planet, missing half his mask, like exactly what he does when he get, we get back to Mustafar and we're in his castle. Like, he's like, I'm going to fucking find this guy. And it's like, yeah, why wouldn't he be searching all over the place for him? Like, you know, people, you know, you got like you and McGregor out there, like, I want to come back and do more. We all want them to come back and do more. And like for a split second, you're like, all right, well, Considering where you are, you could probably tell one more story. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to risk anything because yeah. you're working with a very intricate canon that spans so many different endpoints. You don't want to create spots that could be rocky. So, like, yeah, you know what? Let's reaffirm that he is, you know, serving the, the emperor. And that refocus of, like, it means nothing. Let's Let's move on. Like, spot on the perfect way to go all right you know we're done with the obi darth stuff we don't need to come back to that and what it ultimately does for i think star wars canon right everybody was so nervous that we were messing with canon i think it enhanced everything you know what i mean it makes it makes sense why he he could just hang out on tatooine and like vader's not gonna you know nobody's looking for him anymore it makes 
total sense. You know, you um, have to have Obi Wan have to look over his shoulder and like being able to give him as a character that closure, right? Like that moment where he sees what he created in that fight, and you you see how heartbroken he is. And like, yeah. that's the breaking point. Like, how does Obi ever come back from that? He is like actually seen what he did to his brother. And then Anakin is just like, no, there, there's no Anakin because Obi-Wan killed him. Anakin's dead because I killed him. This is what I made myself. And like, it allows him to kind of have that closure where like, honestly, I don't think he can get to Qui-Gon until he's able to close that Anakin chapter. Yeah. Right? And it's like... And- and even just the conversation that he has with Leia at the end, he can't have that conversation with her if he's still harboring that, like, Anakin is this thing. And it's like, no, Anakin yeah. Skywalker died. And Darth Vader was born. So, like, you didn't lose... I mean, you lost your friend, but, like, you didn't lose him. Anakin is still Anakin. And that, you know, gives him the ability to heal himself, but also deliver that wonderful little piece to Leia at the end where he's like, you know what? I can tell you the good things about your dad because your yeah. dad was a good man. And like the way they're able to give the character closure like that, you know, amplified that, you know, learner master moment with what you get in this series. And then like one of those things that we even talked about was like, how do you level Obi-Wan back up? He's been out of the force for so long. Oh, duh. Obi-Wan's a master Jedi. And like, yeah, he was out of touch, but like, I would say if like, you know, Michael Jordan retired for a few years and went to go play baseball <laughs> and then came back and dusted it off and won three titles. And I like that it wasn't what I thought it was going to be where he was going to outsmart him. It was like, no, I'm going to go God mode because I yeah. am still the better mm-hmm. Jedi and, and manipulator of the force because my head's clear in this particular moment. And if anything, I think the forming a relationship and an attachment to Leia and, you know, you get Luke, I guess, on the back side, but I think forming that relationship is what allows Obi-Wan to be stronger, right? Mm-hmm. And like That's stuff that obviously we get with Luke where, like, embracing your friendships and the people you care about make that ability so much, you know, like, it can enhance it more yeah. than away from it. And, like, you see that for a bit, like, I don't think he could have done what he did if he didn't get that connection with Leia yeah and I think you you see right in the sequels how attachment when mixed with somebody who's like destined for the dark side anyway like see the Anakin how it could it, it does exactly what the Jedi are worried about but when you have good intentions not all attachment is bad we see that with Obi-Wan I mean you saw that with like Satine too in, in um Clone Wars but like yeah, it was really the driving force. It gave him like a reason to fight and a reason to come back and not just be like, okay, this is my destiny. Um, and yeah, I don't think we get to the point at the end of the episode. And maybe this is why they had all this Reva stuff, right? It's it's the telling the story of two people who are tethered to Anakin for different reasons, who are focused on Anakin. Anakin who at the end of this episode, we're both free, right? As Obi-Wan said, you know, we're both free. We can do whatever we want. We can do whatever we want. Um, who knows what Reva's going to do now? I don't know if we'll see her character again, um, but they're both free. They're no longer tethered to him. And you, we don't get that Leia scene. We don't get that, that Luke scene or the scene with Owen. And he's like, you're his protectors now. You don't necessarily need me, but I'll be here. And we don't get the Qui-Gon Jinn scene without him saying, okay, I am no longer weighed down by what I thought I did to my brother. This is a path that like only probably could have been avoided if Qui-Gon Jinn never died. Blame fucking Darth Maul for all of this. Um, And so now he can like move forward, right? The past is in the past look towards the future um i think it was beautiful <laughs> that i said it was so good yeah i mean and it's one of those things where like I, I was saying this even like as we were watching it you know throughout the course of the season where like when you step back and look at the whole picture and what this show brings from a storyline perspective like i think it's you know you're gonna look back at obi-wan and be like oh man that enhanced so many things it does the thing that dave filoni is really really good at taking characters 
that he's worked with and like just enhancing stories that we already know. And yeah, when you get into the nitty gritty, sure. There, there are things that don't make sense. I think maybe if you had hour long episodes, you could have built Riva to be a character where when you get to the end, you're glad that she survives and that she's free rather than being like, yeah. you're going to get in the way of what I really want. And I think in the moment, yeah, you might feel kind of negative, but I think when you look at the grand scheme, it's like, yeah, this show did exactly what we all wanted the show to do. And it delivered literally on everything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I said, I think for me, I think the fact this show enhances canon and characters and, and relationships and moments from something that was made decades ago is just super impressive. And like, as a Star Wars fan, how can you not be elated with everything we get here? And just elated in the fact that you brought these two guys back that to us means so much. And now like that they're back, like you're hearing both of them being like, I I don't wanna be done, you know what I mean? And while we don't necessarily have to have, you know, while while we won't get another Darth Vader, Obi-Wan moment, no reason you couldn't go back and give us a live action Clone Wars, you know, moment for the two of them, you know, or go back and show something like we were talking about with like the training where you could add to that story with a past story, or, you know, you just have both characters now set up where you could do separate things with them, you know, and you yeah. have, I mean, Obi's got, you know, Qui-Gon and all that stuff. At some point he's going to intersect with Maul, like again, so, like, there are things that you could play with there for him, and there's obviously plenty of things that you could play with for, for Vader. But whether we get them ever again or we don't, getting those two guys back and just getting to see the sheer joy, even though, you know, Hayden most of the time has a helmet on, like, you can just tell, even in his body language, like, these two yeah. guys love doing this shit. Like you said, playing lightsabers, you know, and they're yeah. so good at it. Like just the I little bears that they throw in or like, you know, that these are two guys like, man, I miss doing this shit. Like yeah. a little like this behind the back toss that Obi did at one point. I was like, yeah. get it, Ewan. Like, yeah, I can see a world in which like, if they were to do a season two and they were to bring Neeson like on and you have flashbacks, right? Cause they're, they're training for whatever Qui-Gon Jinn, um, I would assume you can get Hayden back to do like flashbacks oh, again, a hundred percent. And I'm sure we'll get a Vader show because as ruthless, like that's where that's leading a hundred percent. So they, they presented us with everything that we wanted and tied up a lot of, left a lot of things open-ended, which is great. Mm-hmm. Gave us things that like, we didn't think we were really even going to get like Liam Neeson and Qui-Gon Jinn even though we hoped, like, we, we were t- even talking about it in the earlier episode, we kind of forgot that, like, that this was a rumor. Um, and then one thing is, in terms of tying up loose ends, what he says to Leia, and she's like, will I ever see you again? He goes, maybe, but if you do, we ha- we can't act like we've ever seen each other before, yeah. because that could put us, put us both in danger. So you'll see me when I'm, a, if maybe when I'm an old man, but, like, a ha- we can't. So that answers the big question of okay well what happens to the most famous speech in all of cinematic history right in that she pretends like she's never met him before well you tell a 10 year old who looks up you know somebody a 10 year old who looks up to you that like if we see each other again this is how it has to be you can tell she's going to take that to heart and that's how it plays out right like we, we can't say that in the past we've, we've seen each other these are our ties like my father because of the way the empire is so that also makes sense people were really concerned about that the entire season and it's it's literally as simple as putting in a line and saying like pretend like we've never met yeah and to a 10 year old she's like okay sure and people were freaking out about that the entire season worried how are you gonna mess up canon clearly they knew that like that is a piece of canon that they cannot fuck with because again one of the group most famous speeches in all of cinematic history yeah. and like i think they nailed it and it, it wasn't uh it wasn't a ton it was very simple but it like it did the trick it did exactly what it had to do yeah um, it's you know it's one of those things where like it's exactly what joby harold said in that interview like obviously he was i think mostly directing to the grand inquisitor but like the fact of the matter is, is 
canon means more to Lucasfilm than it means to the fans. And whether you like, you know, the idea of Reva or bringing her in or whatever you do there, you can't deny that Joby Harold has a phenomenal grasp on canon and how to utilize it, how to leave things set. So it's like, oh yeah, we elevated these things that everybody loves, but all the other things that we need to be in place so all that shit still plays out correctly, it's all there. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I hope you get to see Joby Harold do some more stuff. I think he he got it. You know, like the stuff that mattered, they got. Yeah. Things that didn't work, that's where you take your, you know, constructive criticism and be like, all right, we tried this thing. It didn't really work. Um, you know what? Next time we won't try something like that. And we'll, you know, maybe sh- simple fly it or, or put it in a spot where it's like, at least, you know, you have a writer here that understands Star Wars, understands canon and understands how to tie in things the way Dave Filoni would have been doing it. Mm-hmm. When he was working on Clone Wars. Same with Deborah Chow. Like behind the camera, uh, this show's flawless. You know what I mean? Like her camera work is so good. And the, you know, the way in which she moves this story visually, like, again, is someone who gets it. Like, even to give, you know, like Vader that like Ip Man, you know, style fight sequence with Reva to then also deliver on, you know, a lightsaber sequence where like, you've got a high bar with these two guys yeah. when it comes to lightsaber sequences. And you not only deliver on that, but you present it in a way where you're like this is the shit that like i'm hanging on my wall you know what i mean like yeah that like they they yeah. crushed the stuff that mattered and i hope that that's what people walk away with this from where it's like all the things that made me turn into a six-year-old or a 10-year-old or whenever i was watching these movies like that's the stuff that hit and hit the hardest and that's mm-hmm. the shit that ultimately matters you know the stuff that doesn't work you know, it ultimately doesn't get in the way of yeah. things that matter. And like you said, even even if you don't like it, there is a through line there where it kind of gives you, but you can see where they're doing from a conceptual standpoint, where again, when you're looking broad strokes, you're going, mm-hmm. oh man, this show did exactly what we needed it to do. And you should, we should all be ecstatic about that. Yeah, it was good. I mean, overall, I'm just happy we got it. Yeah. I've wanted it for like five years. And like looking at the, I mean, more than five years, clearly, but like looking at the uh, the fight scene between Obi Wan and Vader, I'm like, I would add full disclosure for anybody watching. It's like I have a big Star Wars like leg tattoo um, that centers that centers around its Leia, and then Obi Wan overarching, and then I have Kylo Ren. And basically, what my tattoo artist conceptualized was we have Leia at the center, and it's like everybody who's trying to protect her or anybody who's like linked to her in some way and like um I'm like oh I would add that because this that like that fight scene to that piece because it's it's that this is literally what the entire show is right it's yeah. about Obi-Wan getting his shit together to protect Leia which is amazing it's everything I personally could have wanted as a Star Wars like as in my own personal Star Wars fandom yeah and it, like and that's one of those things where like that surprise was so wonderful, right? Like you're going into the show, Obi-Wan, Luke, we know what we're getting, Darth Vader, Anakin, boom. Like this this stuff writes itself. And then all of a sudden, little Leia pops up and you're like, okay, uh, let's yeah. see where this goes. And like, it just ultimately enhances all of these things that we, we've grown up with in a way we're like, yeah, like that sequence becomes what the heart of the show is, which is like, Obi-Wan getting the chance to save a different Skywalker um, and getting to actually save Leia. Like, I would love to see one of them shots from that on your leg. That would be fucking so yeah. cool. Yeah, I was like, oh, maybe I have to go to Louisiana. I knew, I knew as soon as the show came out, I was like, if there's going to be something, I'm like, all right, time to get tattooed again. All right, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> um, but last thing, we finally got the hello there. Oh, and that uh, was, was so like, like literally, yeah. they delivered on everything. everything. Even my little like selfish, I want to see Anakin without the mask. He didn't take mask. it off, but they. And you know what's nice is like, and this is like one of those where it's like I feel like you have Star Wars fans working on this shit. That's one of those like really important moments for Ahsoka's character 
right? When she strikes Vader and, and slashes the mask, and it's like, oh shit, Anakin's in there. And that's one of those like really strong moments from Rebels, a show that they've referenced and pulled from a lot. So to mirror that and give it to Obi-Wan, like mm -hmm. first makes so much sense, right? Like those are, you know, those are his siblings, you know, that's his family. And like, if Ahsoka gets it, it's cool that Obi gets, I think the same. And I got, I'd have to check Rebels, but I want to say it's the opposite sides. Like, I think yeah. each, each side, which of course would make a ton of sense because everything in Star mm -hmm. Wars about duality. Yeah. And I mean, just like the amount yeah. of balance and just the way that the two guys move, the way their stories work, like that's the shit where it's like, these people understand Star Wars. And that's all yeah. I care about. Because when people who and don't understand Star Wars get their hands on it, we get messes. And clearly yeah. when people who understand Star Wars get their hands on it, we get magic. And like even in just a little and i know i said that was my last one but the little details even like when his helmet gets flashed you see his face you see that his his voice modulation gets messed up and so you hear hayden interspersed with what they're doing with james earl jones's yeah. voice and it's like holy oh, shit boy. okay because like because that's always like one of the biggest things it's like well you have the, now you have this white dude who sounds like james earl jones what the fuck and you're seeing it's because he's machine, like, which you can put together two and two, right? But, like, just to see it and to hear his voice under the mask, when you kind of see his face, yeah. you just see what that did to Obi-Wan and, like, hearing and not the Vader breathing, not the James Earl Jones, like, hearing his voice, I was like, yeah, and like I and, nearly lost it. And, like, again, that's one of those things that just adds into what Obi-Wan is experiencing, right? Like, being able to let go you're, you're literally watching Anakin morph, you know, it verbally. And yeah. it, the, the sound design, I mean, we talk about the visual effects, we talk about the choreography and the story. The sound design on this show across the board was spectacular. I mean, when those sabers come on, all of those fights, like, those are things oh, that you can yeah. listen to because they're always in the background, but, like, they hit at the right spots. And then you get something like that, and you're just like, man, someone someone should give the the sound design team like a, a pat on the back because they, they did an excellent job and you know this is one of those like i said you can nitpick wherever you want you can have your issues with the show at, at the end of it this is like really really high quality television you know what i mean i mean the visual effects alone but like you're getting movie quality stuff and i mean we've been getting that right with the mandalorian but like if this doesn't just get you excited for everything else that's now starting to come, like, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay. Right. Perfection. Yeah. Perfection. <laughs> All right. We made it to the end of, of the okay. season. I selfishly hope it's not the last time that we see Ewan or Hayden. Um, I, my gut tells me that I, I think the general reaction and the fact that like, Miss Marvel is the lowest watched rated show that Marvel has had just shows you how many people were like, I can't pay attention to that right now because fucking Obi-Wan and Anakin, right? Like I, I yeah. that, you know, I hope we get more, but end of the season, got anything left? Any final thoughts, things you want to put out there into the world? We, I mean, clearly need season two with William Neeson. <laughs> That's the biggest, that's my biggest takeaway, right? And we need, we need a Vader, like, we need a Vader series. Um, I mean, I'll take anything, right? I'll give me Jimmy Smith back and, and Little Leia because the, the book trilogies they've done or the books they've, they've written about, like, young Leia have been fantastic. Give me uh, Vivian Lyra Blair back, add in Millie Bobby Brown for a teenage Leia, just Give me all of that. I'll I'll take all of that. I'll take all of that. Jimmy Smith. I'll give me all of Jimmy Smith. Yeah. But I think what what this did was people were so nervous about taking characters that are beloved and like what are they going to do with them and kind of see because of the sequel. The sequel they weren't treated the best. Um, I think they did a great job. I don't think they ruined the characters. I think a lot of what they did in this season enhanced you know, does similar to similar to what Clone Wars did where it enhanced a lot of the aspects, answered some questions. Was it all great? No, but you're not going to get a show that's like hitting all the marks a thousand, like 100% of the time. You're just not. You, Nothing Marvel or Disney has put out has done that, right? Like yeah, it's like you, you, 
you want the creators to feel like they can explore, like you were saying, like try something new, take risks, because like if they don't, then things become boring. But the stuff that they, they did deliver on that did hit, hit hard. And it's going to stick with me for a while. I know I'm sure it's going to stick with you as well, but like, yeah, it was, it was overall, I'm not mad that we got the show. I'm elated. And I think that ultimately means like it was, it was a home run. Yeah. All right. Could not agree more. And it's one of these things that I just continue to find fascinating, right? Is like since Filoni got chief creative officer, like you can just see all the things that he's doing for Star Wars across the board. I mean, he's literally working the timeline at both ends. Yeah. But I feel like one of the things that he keeps dipping his toe into is can we utilize Luke and Leia in any way where we can tell valuable stories? And they continue to find ways to do it. Like maybe don't let Vivian Lyra Blair run until she's like 15. But yeah. like outside of that, like that little girl is so Carrie Fisher. She so gets Leia. And like, I loved the fact that even though she is so intelligent and you can see what she is going to become with what she's giving us, like she still has moments where she's a little kid as she should. And she just, she expresses all of that in a way where it's like, yeah, give me a young Leia show. You know, you keep messing around with this like Luke deep fake stuff. And at some point someone's going to be like, fuck it. Can we just get Sebastian Stan? Yeah. I mean, sign me up for Sebastian Stan and Millie Bobby Brown training or running around and training. Yeah. Together. Like, yes, please. And I think it's one of these things where we're, we're dipping our toe enough and we're seeing positive responses where it's like, you're just going to get to a point where the fans are just going to be outright. Like, give me that shit. Like, we yeah. want it because you're, the stories that they're telling are worthwhile stories. And there are things that, you know, I think us fans that have been fans since we were you know, yay big, would love to see. But, like, also, there's an entirely new generation of Star Wars fans coming in. Like, as much as I love going back and watching the old stuff, they're living in a world where, like, I'm sure they go back and they're like, what are we watching, mom and dad? You know what I mean? Like, you're going to have to work on them because it's, it's older. Like, to be able to give a new generation Luke and Leia stories where they can come to loving those characters in their own right like stuff like that yeah and my uh my niece was watching star wars she's five and my cousin had on had on the show and she was like she saw little leia and was like oh cool who is that like what is she doing and she saw herself in that in that role and like so she sat down and my cousin was like she would have never sat down to watch star wars if she didn't see young Leia and like I'm like yes that's exactly what they want they're pulling in a new generation whereas like growing up we had I know personally I had Star Wars taped off the tv on VHS and my dad was super super into it so my brother and I got really into it and then I was seven when Phantom Menace came out so same age around my as my niece and I was like this is amazing what is this this is really cool who are these guys and then like you get older right I was 10 when Attack of the Clones comes out total girl I'm like oh love struck like this is great young Hayden Christensen young Ewan McGregor love it and it's like so you it's different journeys but like I love hearing that my niece is watching it because of the young like you said you're you're pulling in new generations um like they did with like they did with us yeah and, you and you're pulling you're pulling them in with the characters that started everything right where it's like I think we were close enough to the original trilogy as kids where we could watch it and be, I mean, like kids, you might not understand this, but like without Star Wars' existence, I don't have anything to watch in space as a kid, you know, like those yeah. were my space stories. And, you know, like I said, we were close enough to it where the age of the film doesn't impact us and we can actually grow up loving those characters. And then yeah. when you find out, oh, we're going to get like, the Darth Vader and Obi-Wan like origin stories. That's really cool. And now I can gr grip into that because it's mine. And now here, you know, you're like you said, like having little Leia in the show, if it gets one kid or, or specifically like a little girl who's able to look and go, Oh my God, I'm on screen. I want to watch this shit is it's worth it. It's already worth it. And the fact that you're able to tie in a kid that's five years old, to 
Leia, right? Like you're, you're without having to be like, look at this ancient movie. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, like th- th- there's, there's puppets and miniatures explosion. There's no CGI. Yeah. Like you're able to pull them in in the realm that they're familiar with, but with the same characters. And that's really fucking cool, man. And like now when they grow up, they're going to want to go back and watch the old movies and be like, oh my gosh, this is what happened to that character. Like it, they, there's just so many more positive opportunities if you start to explore in that route. And like, I've talked to people who, you know, ride with Mandalorian because it's Star Wars content and stuff to watch. But like, I've had so many friends where it's like, they're things like, I just, I want stuff that like attaches to Star Wars. Like I want that stuff that brings me back to the originals. Like we know because we, we grew up with Dave Filoni, like, don't worry, he'll get there. He just got to give him some time to build some stuff. But like there, I think there is a fan base of the non diehards that really want content that ties to the original stuff. That's what pulls them in. You know what I mean? Like you're not necessarily gonna have diehards like you and me but like the old school fans oh shit you're gonna do stuff with luke and leia i might pay attention to that like yeah it's it's gonna be fun to watch how they continue to build this world and pull people in and what stories they decide to tell or not tell because they've got more than enough material to tell any story they want to tell in this galaxy i know i still get excited like i was reading i like plowed through the first thrawn trilogy last year Mm -hmm. and i forget which book second or third one and like it's a mission with Thrawn and, and not Vader but Thrawn and Anakin and so that and it shows you how Thrawn would be one of the few people who could understand that Vader is Anakin because of his, uh, his fight tactics and I got so excited I'm reading the book and I was like oh shit there's Anakin oh shit they're going to see Padme and like you get really really excited because they're pulling in characters that you know and love that you grew up with but also introducing like this really really cool character and showing how they intersect where Thrawn's entire story isn't how he relates to Anakin, Vader, Padme but you see that like oh yeah there was a, a lot of years in this war that they were off doing stuff how did that impact the rest of the galaxy and so like it's just yeah you, you always want even just like a little mention of like okay, I'm going to do this new trilogy. It's not going to be connected to the original Skywalker saga. But, like, they're, they still are, like, the thread in the galaxy that you kind of want to, like, draw to and mention. I mean, I just go right back to Tala and Roken, right? Like, this show introduces those two characters where I'm like, fuck, I would ride around with, like, an underground rebel yeah. for the Jedi. Like, tell me that story. And I am now invested and I care about those characters because they came across... A character that I care about and two characters that I care about right so it's like yeah you, you want to be able to expand this universe you know like we've heard especially when they were fucking up the Skywalker stuff like people going the galaxy is so huge why we gotta keep going back to the Skywalkers but at the end of the day I mean every time we if it's done correctly when we go back you love that stuff so like if you're if you're finding ways where you can introduce other characters that cross paths with them then it's like oh well now it's worthwhile to go spend a journey with them because they're they're legitimately connected to the story that matters and like yeah those are the things for me watching what they're doing with these tv shows that's really fun where it's like you see how they're potentially developing different routes for them to take you know you might never come around to any kind of show about you know moving the jedi around during this time period but if you do you've got some things that you can go to that fans will be like, oh shit, yeah, right, that's how you get me back into that. And those are the things that make me excited because it didn't feel like that shit existed until Dave Filoni was in control of things. And that makes me, I always say Clone Wars and Rebels and all these things, but it's like when you've seen what that guy can do with that stuff, that's what gets me excited to see how he's going to work this stuff to just make the overall story better. And that's why I love him so much. And it's why I love Star Wars. Uh, I don't have anything else. I'm completely. That was perfect. End. <laughs> right. Oh, guys, what a journey it's been as a Star Wars fan, and specifically a prequel trilogy fan. Um, fans, this this was a really magical ride for us. We had a ball. Um, but we want to know, man, what were you thinking? We, you know, what we think about the finale and the show and what it means. So. Give us everything you got, man. What was your favorite stuff? 
how much did you just want to throw your TV when Reva was on screen? Could you see a reason for that character to exist? Or, you know what, let's just talk about Darth Vader and Obi-Wan because that's what we all want to talk about, right? That shit was dope. So anything you got, man, good, bad, indifferent on Obi-Wan. Part six, the series as a whole, throw it down below in the comments section. Look forward to talking to you guys down there. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a Brit a thumbs up. And, uh, you know, if you haven't and you want to show a little love, to the types of things that we got going on over here at the cinema sit down you want to show some support well hey come join c maniac nation this is the best place to be for those things and you can do that by jumping over there hitting that subscribe button hitting that little bell if you want those alerts and until next time Britt, thank you so much for riding with me through this show i can excuse your one miss because you you provided such good star wars talking points and material i mean we, we were kind of talking like me and Britt work together and we would see each other on a routine basis and always talking Star Wars, Marvel, all the things that we love. And pandemic hits literally have not seen or spoken to you verbally since. And like to have you here for this yeah. show meant a lot to me. And it was so much fun to kind of get back into that groove of like talking Star Wars with my favorite person to talk Star Wars to. So thank you so much for being you. around. You are welcome here anytime. I know we got other Star Wars shows. I, I know they're not necessarily all going to make you wake up at 3 a.m., but like, if something like Ahsoka or, you know, Darth Vader show makes you go, you know, yeah. but Corey, I want to come back. I'll be here. here. No, yep. You got a home here anytime you want. Um, so thank you for all of the phenomenal Star Wars stuff that you brought us all season long. Um, that's it, guys. Uh, for the Seaman's Cinema Sit Down, my good friend Britt, I've been the Seaman. We are signing off for the last time on Obi-Wan Kenobi. Peace! Oh, hey, what's going on? Uh, you must be sticking around because you're looking for more content feature in this guy. Well, guess what? You're in the right place. You can check out more videos right here and right here. Uh, and if you have and you want to come join that C-Maniac Nation, you can hit that subscribe right over there.